where everyone had a sixth sense that she was American, so they all erupted into a spontaneous applause. File this under things that never happened for 1,000, please, Alex. Yesterday was inauguration day, which means two things. Joe Biden was sworn in at the White House, and two, every single woke asshole on social media rushed to Twitter with their fictional kids to try to grab some clout. A couple months ago, after the tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman, followed up by the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, there was an avalanche of bad tweets highlighted by these two posts. This one here highlighted the fictional fantasies some people were coming up, connecting these two people who had nothing to do with each other. And this tweet here, which gave birth to the phrase Ruth Conda forever, as well as the new Twitter trend of making up stories about your young children somehow being politically savvy. Fast forward to Inauguration Day, the Super Bowl for bad tweets, where everybody was coming up with fictional scenarios, as well as talking about things their children absolutely never said. The top five Ruth Conda forever tweets from Inauguration Day. Number five on the list, we've got Chelsea Clinton here weighing in on her four-year-old son who somehow understands the concept of it being Joe Biden's first full day in the White House. He knows who Joe Biden is, knows his position, and knows that yesterday was just a half day, and today he's really got to get to work. On the 21st day of the 21st century of the 21st year, I wonder if Aiden said, Mommy, hasn't Pop Pop killed 21 people? Number four on the list, we've got actress Rachel Bilson weighing in on her Inauguration Day experience as she sat at home watching with her daughter, who turned to her and said, Mommy, can one day I be vice president? A perfectly normal thing for a young lady to say, an aspiring girl who wants to grow up and become something in this world. You know, a teenage girl or a college-age girl who has her own aspirations. Rachel Bilson's daughter is five. Number three on the list, we've got Amanda Palmer coming up with completely fictional scenarios of her going to coffee houses in New Zealand where everyone had a sixth sense that she was American, so they all erupted into a spontaneous applause. File this under things that never happened for 1,000, please, Alex. She followed up with a tweet saying, Yankee, go home. No, 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 lady, just stay there. We're good. Number two on the list, we've got Edward from the Atlantic with the most jumbled up, convoluted, catastrophic tweet I've ever seen. Talking about how long Kamala Harris's hair is and how she had the longest hair to ever be inaugurated at the White House because she's a woman. Not so fast, Edward. It's the year 2021. We're not going to do these gender roles. It's not just that all women have long hair and all boys have short hair. You're not going to put anyone in a box like that. And by the way, Plenty of presidents have had flow. Just look at James Polk. That guy had hair for days. Look at John Calhoun. Plenty of guys have been inaugurated at the White House with some flow. Not just Kamala Harris. And number one on the list for the best Ruth Conda Forever post of Inauguration Day, it comes from Instagram. The most bullshit account you've ever seen in your life, live from snack time, with a completely fabricated situation with a five-year-old correcting her mother that it's not just Jill Biden, it's Dr. Jill Biden because women can be doctors too. Search the hashtag Ruth Conda Forever Awards on Twitter. You'll see hundreds more of these tweets from people from all sides of the aisle, from all ages, all genders, all backgrounds, completely making up fictional scenarios, completely overreacting emotionally, and giving us, the normal people here in the middle, the best internet content of the year.